Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor for markgaylor.com. You've joined me um, in the develop module of Lightroom to make the first edits of this raw image. Now these first edits are what I refer to as objective adjustments. They're not um, based on any decisions about aesthetics. Okay, and these are what I refer also refer to as the essential edits. Okay, so uh, some people would start off in the basic panel, but I'm actually going to come over to the lens corrections panel first. And you'll see that we have two checkboxes here that are not checked. And we also have an information, and this not, might not appear on every image that you import into Lightroom. But if I click on the uh, eye for more information, you'll see that the chromatic aberration for this image has been removed in camera. So I do not need to check that first remove chromatic aberration checkbox, but I can click on the enable profile corrections. This picks up the lens I use to capture the image. Okay, so let's uh, collapse that panel and we'll now come over to, again, not the basic panel, but the crop overlay icon. Um, I'm not going to make um, a stylized or a subjective crop to this image. I'm merely going to straighten an image that was captured slightly crooked. So I'm just going to run the straighten tool over that distant shoreline to render this image straight and then click on the crop overlay or press R on the keyboard in order to come out of that dialog. Now let's go into the basic panel. We'll start at the top, we'll click on the white balance tool. Okay, now if I just zoom in, I'll just press the, uh, the Z key on the keyboard, you'll see that I've got a very conveniently placed neutral tone uh, behind this um, uh, blue waterproof here. And if I click on it, it's just going to warm the image up, which was set slightly cool by the camera. So we've come from as shot, which was the auto white balance of the camera, to a custom white balance. Okay, let's zoom back out. I'll just press the Z key on the keyboard again. And uh, now let's proceed to make some more edits. Um, now, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, these are all reasonably subjective and will depend on the images that you're editing. Um, but what we can do is we can set the whites and blacks for this image. Now, an automated way to do this is to hold down the shift key and double click the word whites and double click the word blacks. This expands the dynamic range of the levels inside of this image. So we have a full dynamic range from absolute black to absolute white in the image. We can do this manually by holding down the option key and clicking on that white slider. You can see if we have any areas that are absolute white, there will be clipping occurring. So I just need to wind that back until we either have a single color or no uh, colors at all. And so this is the optimum white point for this image. We can do the same thing with the black slider. You'll see a few colors there. Absolute black clipping would be if these areas turn solid black. If we are just left with a few um, colors, primary or secondary colors, that is just a little bit of clipping occurring in one of the three channels. And so now I've um, objectively set that black and white point. Now this image was set, um, captured at 100 ISO, so we do not need to um, pay attention to any uh, high or elevated noise levels, but I will want to sharpen this image. So we're going to come down to the detail panel. The default sharpening inside of a Lightroom is quite conservative, and so most people want to raise this. Again, it is worth zooming in to make this sharpening process. I'm going to raise the sharpening up to um, maybe uh, something around the 70 mark. Okay, I'll just click the up arrow on the keyboard to put that exactly at 70. Now you will see that there is some non-image data being sharpened in the smooth areas of tone. So we can render those tones uh, absolutely smooth by using the masking slider. Again, we'll hold down the Alt or Option key and raise that masking slider. The areas that turn black are areas that will not be subjected to the sharpening process, i.e. it will be rendering those areas or tones free from the sharpening and therefore a lot smoother in tone. 
Again, that is an objective edit. OK, so let's just uh, collapse that panel and just uh, a recap on where we've been with this image. OK, so we've straightened the image. We've set the auto white balance to a custom white balance. We've set the blacks and whites. We've applied lens corrections and uh, we've optimized the sharpening. These are all what I consider to be objective edits. OK, I'm Mark Gaylor for markgaylor.com.